one thing I wanted to look at and show you here is actually the, the elevation view. We don't just provide plan views of the walls, we actually also provide elevation views okay. of the walls. So here we're looking at that same shear wall that we have standing right in front of That's us right. as if we were looking at the face of the wall. Um, and you can see we're pointing out vertical reinforcement for them. We've got the mat foundation that we're standing on top of right, right now. This is the foundation we're standing on okay. top of. Got it. We have bars that are sticking out of the Is that an actual rebar doing an L, L shape movement exactly. there? Exactly. So you're, there we go. Now we're talking about exactly how to install the rebar. Exactly. And so anyone could see you're saying they should be a, 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 a bar that would actually be L shaped to engage with the foundation. Exactly. These appear to be the forms for the cement. Am I right? That's absolutely correct. Okay. Yeah, the interesting thing about concrete is that there's no defined shape for concrete. Okay. Right? It's really, it's really just a soup when it arrives here on site. Right. So we have to give it its shape by using what's called form work. So this is, oh, this is form there. work? It's called form work. It's not wear, it's form work. I would call it form work. Work? Work. W-O-R-K. W-O-R-K. Okay. Form work. So this is what is then the cement is cast against these panels? That's right. So these panels are actually panels for walls that we're like that we were just looking at. So the these are reused. So these are reused. What they would do is they'll take these and they'll take the crane and lift them up to the top story and they'll stand them up. And so these so will, this will be upright. This will be upright and it'll actually be vertical. And you can see that they've got a lot of structure on the back of this. Yeah. To resist the, uh, the amount of pressure that's going to be in the concrete. As what kind of pressure? Do you ever have a specification? Is it two tons? Is it 5,000 pounds per square inch? What's you know, the amount? You can think of it this way. The same way that you have a swimming pool, as soon as you dive down into the bottom of that swimming pool, that pressure increases the more and more you go down to the oh, okay. bottom. Okay, so the lower point has the highest pressure. So the lower point has the highest pressure, okay. and if they're not careful, if they don't provide enough bracing behind it, that pressure can actually bulge the form work out as they pour it and you end up with a uh, distorted, a, mis a misplaced wall. Okay, so you as structural engineers, would this be correct, Ryan, if I said, as structural engineers, part of your training is to design the, be involved with the design and construction of the forms. Now, we're, I would say that we're equipped to do that. We don't typically you take depend responsibility on for it. You, you depend on them. Yeah, that's right. Usually, there's, there's certain things on the job site that are the contractor's responsibility. So there is an engineer and structural engineer who would design the okay. formwork. So there's an engineer designing these? There's an engineer who's designing those. Okay. It's not typically the same engineer who designs the building. Though. Okay. Now these things, these look like sawhorses, but they're, 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 they'd be very expensive sawhorses. They must be part of the structure. Um, they can be. Um, these would be typically used in the mat foundation. You can see our mat foundation. Is mat, mat foundation. The mat foundation is the bottom is story. Is that M-A-T? M-A-T, yes. Why is it called foundation. the mat foundation? Well, there's material foundation? No, there's actually different types of mat or different types of foundations. There's certain foundations that are isolated. So there's one single foundation for each individual column or one single foundation for each individual wall. Okay. In this case, all the columns and all the walls are sharing a foundation. You can see the foundation is continuous right. from this column over to this wall. Sure. That's like a big mat raft. So that's why it's called a mat foundation. Oh, so they're all in a big raft. They're all in a big raft. A big cement raft. They're all in a no, big a concrete raft. That's right. They're Got all it. in a big concrete okay. raft on the soil. Where would this be employed in the construction? So where this would be is this, this raft that we're talking about is upwards of three feet thick at some places. Okay. So often what they'll take is they'll put these in the mat foundation in order to be able to place the reinforcement correctly at the top and the bottom of the So uh, this would be embedded vertically. Exactly. Just as it is. This is really so. kind of just a chair for them to uh, to put their reinforcement on during construction. Kind of like but it, it is floor. integrated into the cement. They'll just cast it right in. Okay. So then other bars will, lay, will, lay, will go across the top? Exactly. Okay, good. Looks like uh, your supervisor's showing up to inspect right. what's going on. That's right. All right, do so we have to behave now and act like we're really working? <laughs> it wouldn't hurt. Okay, all right. Well, what's the, introduce me to him. Sure. Ask him for a reason. He's buying us breakfast. Hi. I kept looking Steve, around for the guy with the, with the stick thing. Out. How are nice you? To meet you? Nice to meet you. I'm Steve Ford. What's your name? Jim. Jim. All right, and you're the boss. Kind of. All right, well, <laughs> I told him now we got to behave. Has he been level with you here? He's been great. He's, I I, he, he insisted I wear safety goggles because uh, he didn't want me to be a, you know, on camera walking around looking like a coconut on a construction site. You know what I mean? <laughs> so good, Jim. Well, thanks. They promised me that you buy us all breakfast afterwards. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Good to meet you. Yeah, pleasure. So we'll go up to, uh, we saw these. 
That's fascinating. So there's a certain amount of engineering design that, that specifies what these are. The type you know, of, you know. You know, there's a there's a term that I, I usually rely on. It's called means and methods. There's a certain amount of getting the rebar placed in the con in the structure that the contractor's responsibility to work out. Here we go again. Well, now I know what that horn means. Yeah, exactly. And we're not standing down there this time. Now we be we pulling we, up we, both of the formwork for the columns at the next level of the building. Okay, so those are what's used for these. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, Ryan, it looks yeah. like what I'm looking at is this was this is this is temporary support. This is called shoring. It's used to support the uh, formwork that we looked at earlier. Yeah. During construction, as you can see, even though they've already poured three or four levels, yeah. The concrete is so young at that point that it can't. It's not strong enough to support the weight of all the construction materials. So what they have to do is they put these posts in and they take it all the way down to the ground. And, and then how long how long is it before the cement is our sorry, the concrete? How I'll, long I'll is give it, you a path for today. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. How long is it before the concrete is formed enough to be removing these supports? Sure. Uh, uh, concrete is normally specified as an age of 28 days. That's kind of the industry standard. So 28 days to like a baby has nine months. 28 days for concrete. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We'll, we'll give a concrete strength that will be specified as a 28-day concrete strength. Okay. Now, Are there different, different rates of hardening? You could specify a different, like a 56-day, but 28 days is by far the most uh, okay. common. Most common. Standard. Okay, cool. All the way around here. So that's it's kind of like a floor jack in a car. It's exactly I like can a relate floor to jack that. in a car. Okay. You can see that they're kind of building this atrium space in here underneath this building where right. this is all going to be open. Okay. So the interior of the building will This could be a lobby the then. Exactly. Okay. The lobby is actually going to be right below us. Okay. And the students will be able to walk through here and this will be a nice open walkway okay. um, from that courtyard to that courtyard okay. as we finish. Cool. So one of the design features we actually have to build into the building is, uh, like I was explaining earlier, we actually have two separate buildings here. We're standing in one of the buildings. We're actually standing right in front of where our elevator is going to be. Yep. So we've got another building just across the walkway. Okay. Now, the students, once the building's built, they'll act as one. The students will never know that they're in two different buildings, but structurally, we have to separate the two. And even though they have to be adjoining. Even though they have to be adjoining. So the place where they actually join up is a really critical spot. And you can see we're going to stand right here where the two buildings meet. So to my right, is, is the east building and to my left is the west building and we actually have to provide a gap between the buildings that's flexible that's flexible so that in an, in the case of an earthquake as the buildings try to move together they don't knock against each other okay we've learned from each of the earthquakes the 91 the 72 am i correct has each earthquake then changed the code that's correct the building code is always evolving we always make sure to take advantage of Experience from past earthquakes. We'll have uh, research teams that go out and evaluate how buildings perform during an earthquake and see how we can learn lessons. One of the interesting things that we're able to do in this new type of construction is actually the way we build the floor slab itself. Okay. And we'll be able to see some of the reinforcing that's going into the floor slab as we move up. Let's do it. Okay, so one thing I would have to believe if you're in this kind of construction is you can't be scared of heights very much. No, you're. you're Always on the uh, edge of the building that uh, hasn't had the uh, hasn't had the wall put on. Yet. Yeah, everything's improvisational until right. it's all finished. Right. Okay. So here we see where the some of the materials and equipment and supplies are. So materials are coming in in a just in time, all the time manner. Yeah, you know what? The, it depends on which materials we're talking about. Yeah. And this is a good view of the building because we can see that they've got a lot of different stages going on in this building all at the same time. Okay. For right? example, they're they're running what a plumbing, electrical. Exactly. You can see at some of the newer decks, they're actually putting in uh, air conditioning ducts. This yep. is that big so heating uh, metal ventilation, sheet metal exactly. heating ventilation, air conditioning. Okay. Exactly. Uh, at the top story, we're here on a great day because they're actually pouring the concrete. So on the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, they can't do that floor until certain things are accomplished. They're right now installing the vents and so on. They can't actually put in the compressors and the, some of the equipment until other steps are done. Am I right? Usually installing all the all the uh, air handler units and compressors and things like that would be the last thing they do on the project. So while the folks down there on the lower floor are doing the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, they couldn't be doing that on the third floor, fourth or fifth because we're still pouring cement today. That's right. Okay, so they're right behind at each stage. They're right behind. 
So down at the first floor, I can see there's actually, what's going on? It looks like they're actually forming the rooms. Those will be the dorms? Those will actually be the apartments. I and mean, so they're forming up the walls of the apartments. And those are made out of beams that are not cement? Those are I mean, concrete. Concrete. Okay. Yeah, those are going to be what's called light gauge metal studs. Okay. So they're, uh, they're actually steel studs, okay. a very thin steel stud that are rolled into actually a T-shape and... Right. When we, before we leave so they the site, have, we can they, the they have some strength, but not a lot of strength. They have some okay. strength, but not a lot of strength. Okay. And they're, they're analogous to like a 2x4 stud you'd have in your house. Okay, yeah. Uh, lighter, but durable.